Hi guys, welcome to another Excessive Gamer Review. My series of thoughts of current and maybe not so current games because some oldies are worth looking back to. If you're hoping for an overall score, a number or anything that remotely depicts any form of scaling system whereby you get to gauge the worthiness of the material, well this isn't the place to get it, but what you certainly get is my most honest opinion of what I think works and doesn't work in any given title. So if you like what you see, then why not subscribe. With all those formalities out of the way, let's get going. I find I get turned off rather easily when it comes to cute graphics that aren't too par with something more along the lines of a Studio Ghibli-esque game, something with the art style of say Nino Kuni or the latest ukulele. At first glance, my time at Porsche really looked like almost a wee representation of what a Ghibli artist might slap together if he was ever asked to draw with a 6 foot pencil on a small piece of tissue paper. I personally prefer games that have that finesse and that polish. Call me a prima donna or whatnot, I'm just built that way. When I game, I want to be immersed in the world and ripped away from reality and typically pixelation and lots of clipping hinders that feeling and totally eradicates the experience. So to iterate, at first glance, my time at Porsche felt like something I wouldn't get too caught up in. The game starts with a simple character creation tool and then slaps you with the inheritance in the form of your father's old workshop and this is where you build everything you need to fulfill commissions and NPC quests. Commissions are basic build quests obtained from the town hall and a class from C to S. C being the lower class builds and S being available later on in the game as you progress are the more complex builds which require the rarer materials. Obtaining the materials is run of the mill. Chop down trees will give you certain type of wood and other goodies, mining rocks will produce ore and minerals and so on and so forth. A little later on in the game you will gain access to mines, where you will basically be breaking up solid ground in order to obtain those more rare materials for your builds. And lastly, you will gain access to the dungeons, where you will have several randomly generated levels containing enemies which will drop specific items you will need for those more complex of builds. Unfortunately, the dungeons are extremely basic and way too easy to get through. It is in my opinion the most lackluster and definitely the buggiest area in the game. Just locking on an enemy is practically futile. There are sections which have poisonous gas which seem to have a huge hit zone and it's practically impossible to get through without taking damage. Then there is a toxic sludge found in many of the initial dungeons which you aren't meant to walk on. Jumping is excruciatingly unresponsive, so it makes things no fun, especially since during your initial runs, your health would be at a minimum, and this sludge removes a lot of that. To round things up regarding the dungeons, I did them because I had to and not because I wanted to. There was very little reward, it was mostly frustrating to the player controls being so clunky. But you can get through the game choosing to avoid dungeons in most cases, so it didn't become a huge of a problem to be fair. The game actually shines in the area I thought no game could ever shine. It shines in the mining. Believe it or not, it's the first game I've ever played where mining is actually quite a lot of fun. When you go to the abandoned ruins for the first time, it seems as though it would just be basic mining and gathering, but you're also able to mine artifacts. With a pair of technologically advanced super duper powerful artifact finding sunglasses which points out the location of relics you can start digging in that direction at your heart's content for those precious old rusty pipes or broken tennis rackets. Once you have a completed set of artifacts you can go to the research lab and unite the pieces in order to make the artifact whole again and later on display it in your house or the museum whichever tickles your fancy. However, the latter will give you XP and rep points too, whereas placing it in your house will improve your overall stats. There is an RPG leveling type of system, cutting down trees, mining, farming, handing in commissions and helping the citizens all grant XP, which then increases your character level and statistics. Clothing items can act as armor and these can be purchased in shops with goals, Porsche's currency. These will increase your attack and or defense. At times they will also drop from enemies or the final boss in any given dungeon. The town is bustling. Each citizen has their own agenda, their own jobs and routines. It is great later on when you understand certain aspects of their routine such as everyone goes to church on a Sunday. So if you need to hand in a commission or talk to someone, you come to learn their routines and become familiar with their everyday patterns which will help in game. Your workshop is also expandable. You can purchase surrounding land to add more workshop machines for crafting, add stables so you can sell horses and have your own mount, a farm to raise chickens, pigs and cows and grow crops and trees. All these give you resources too such as feces for your 
fertilizer, cotton from plants, which can be resold and used for crafting and so forth. The game is rather intricate and I must commend Team 17 for this. My overall experience in my time at Porsche was a little bewildering to say the least. It is absurd to think that the monotony of real life work can be made fun within a game environment but it appears that it does work and people want to work extremely hard within their games to perhaps accomplish some form of reputation not easily achieved in reality. Perhaps that's it. Or perhaps it's just the beast within us longing to rip out of our shells and gain that great sense of accomplishment by completing those really difficult jobs. Whatever it may be, my time at Porsche was a great getaway from the monotony of real life by making the monotony of a made up life feel doable and fulfilling in ways society can't. It was such a chilled gaming experience, I'm going to miss being in Porsche. Thanks Porsche, it really is sad to leave. I'm Excessive Gamer. Until next time.